Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Development. We're here with another one pound wonder and today we're making curry. But not just any old curry, butternut squash and chickpea curry. Vegetables. Now normally I'm not happy unless there's some sort of meat involved, but this curry is the exception to the rule. It is absolutely delicious and packed with nutrition and it's not too hard on the wallet either. I'm not quite sure how much it is per portion. You'll probably feed about four people with this curry, but I'll leave some sort of information here or here um, if you're interested. I don't think I've got anything left to say, so let's get down to business. So for this recipe, you're gonna need two tablespoons of oil, about five dry curry leaves, if you can get fresh, even better. A good pinch of dried chili flakes, one onion, one teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, 10 grams of fresh ginger, two cloves of garlic, about 300 grams of butternut squash, 150 grams of chickpeas, 150 ml of passata, 100 ml of vegetable stock, 50 grams of spinach, one teaspoon of garam masala, and one lime. Okay, that's an awful lot of ingredients, so I hope you wrote that all down. If not, don't worry, I've left a full list of the ingredients and the method for this curry down in the description below. Okay, so before you start this curry, you need to get everything ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this onion peeled and sliced. Once that's done, peel and crush your garlic and ginger. You can use a garlic press if you like, but I quite like to use a microplane. I find that it gives me a really nice smooth puree to use in my curries. You're also going to need to cube your butternut squash. Now, when it comes to preparing your butternut squash, there's a few different ways you can go about it. It's a little bit unsteady when it's on the board, so you're going to want to trim the top and the bottom just to make sure that it doesn't rock around too much. You're going to cause yourself an injury if it's slipping around while you're trying to cut it. I'd also cut it in half again, so I'm not dealing with the full length of the butternut squash. Take it bit by bit as and when I need to. See, look at that, much better. I'm not rocking around at all. Now, when it comes to peeling it, you can use a peeler if you want, but I personally find these are useless. It takes forever to peel a butternut squash with one. I would use my knife to cut all the way around the skin. So I'm making sure I'm removing that big, thick skin from the butternut squash and that sort of white flesh underneath it, just leaving me that beautiful, bright, vivid orange flesh of the butternut squash. Once your squash is peeled, cut it into two centimeter cubes and put them to one side. And that's it, that's all the prep you need to do for this curry so we can get straight down to business. So grab yourself a thick base saucepan and heat the oil over a medium heat. Add your curry leaves and your dried chili and then cook that out for about 30 seconds. Don't leave it too long because they have a tendency to burn very quickly. So 30 seconds is all you're gonna need. Once they've just cooked off and you're getting those fantastic aromas from the curry leaves and the dried chili, then add your sliced onion to the oil and fry very gently for about five minutes until they just start to go golden brown. You're gonna to need to keep scraping the bottom with your wooden spoon just to make sure you're picking up any of that sort of caramelized sugar that comes out of the onion. The last thing you wanna do is to leave that there so it catches and burns. Somehow, while filming this recipe, I've stupidly forgotten to film actually adding the sugar, the ground cumin, the ground coriander, the ginger, and the garlic. I can assure you they're in there, but all you do is you add them to the onions and cook them out for another two minutes. Once this onion and spice mixture is cooked off, then all you need to do is add your cube butternut squash, your chickpeas, your passata, and vegetable stock. Add a little bit more water to barely cover the squash and the chickpeas. Or if you have some extra stock, you can use that instead. Then all you need to do is bring this pan up to the boil. Once the mixture's boiling, turn it down and leave it to simmer nice and gently for about 20 minutes until that butternut squash and those chickpeas are tender. Once it's had about 20 minutes, double check that butternut squash to make sure it's cooked through properly. And then all you need to do is finish this curry. So all you need to do is add your fresh lime juice, add your garam masala, and then finally add your spinach. Stir all these ingredients into the curry until the spinach is completely wilted. Then taste, adjust the seasoning, and this curry is ready to serve. Oh, 
that is spicy. This is absolutely gorgeous. Now it's a good curry in its own right, but it's also an amazing side dish if you want to try it out with some other curries as well. Top it with a little bit of yogurt or raita. I had some coriander lying around, so I threw that on top and it's absolutely delicious. So if you like this recipe, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'll finish this on my own. Mmm.